members of the subcommittee, I'm, uh, it's an honor to be here today. If I may, I'd like to begin with an apology to the family of Leslie Elder. Leslie died an untimely death at age 83 last summer, uninsured and facing foreclosure. I owe her family an apology because Leslie might be alive today had it not been for the work that I used to do. You see, I helped create the same kind of deceptive PR campaigns that are being waged today to weaken the consumer protections in the, in the Affordable Care Act. The campaigns I helped create intentionally misled the American people and their elected officials into believing that the reform of our health insurance system um, would do more harm than good. Among the tactics we used was hiring consulting firms and think tanks to conduct studies and surveys using questionable methodology and disclosing only the findings that could be useful talking points. These campaigns helped maintain an unacceptable status quo in which too many Americans had, have had to declare bankruptcy, lose their homes, and like Leslie Elder, die much too young. Leslie's daughter believes her mother would be alive today if she had been able to get health insurance. But no company was willing to sell her an affordable policy because of her age, her gender, and ultimately her serious but treatable illness. There have been an untold number of Leslie elders who have died prematurely because of insurance company practices that the Affordable Care Act thankfully is ending. The latest scare campaign has insurance companies professing concern about young adults, but what they really worry about is no longer being able to cherry pick the youngest and healthiest. In most states today, insurance companies are able to charge older people like Leslie five, six, or even 10 times more for the same coverage they gladly will sell to younger, healthier people. In some states, there's no limit at all. One of the reasons we're here today is that the Affordable Care Act prohibits insurers from charging older people more than three times as much as they charge young adults. This new age rating ban foils attempts by insurance companies to deny coverage to people they want to avoid, people like Leslie Elder. Of course, the current coordinated attack on the law fails to consider many important factors, and as a result, the studies being cited in this campaign intentionally mislead the public. Here are some, here are some factors that the insurance industry is not talking about, but that a recent and unbiased Urban Institute analysis confirmed. Only a small percentage of young adults will be affected, while many people at the other end of the age band will see benefits that uh, allow them to stay covered and maintain their health. There are many serious deficiencies in today's coverage, especially in the low value, minimal benefit coverage that's being marketed to young people. Banning junk insurance policies, uh, those that are offered even by the biggest companies, while maintaining access to low cost policies will mean that Americans will be able to purchase real coverage that protects them from, from financial ruin if they happen to fall ill. Discriminatory practices have for years priced many people out of the market, allowing for artificially low premiums for others. And finally, premium tax credits will soon be available that will dramatically reduce costs for many consumers. In fact, coverage under the Affordable Care Act will be more affordable for the vast majority of young people because of the Medicaid expansion, the premium tax credits for low to moderate income earners, and the ability of young people to remain on their parents' policies until age 26 if they don't have jobs with health benefits. Adults under 30 will also be able to purchase catastrophic coverage with lower premiums and higher deductibles. And keep in mind that millions of young adults who have employment-based coverage will not be affected at all. The title of today's hearing is Unaffordable Impact of Obamacare on America's Health Insurance Premiums. The title implies that before the Affordable Care Act came along, premiums were stable, but now are on the verge of skyrocketing because of the reform law. Nothing could be further from the truth, but my former colleagues in the insurance industry are hoping that you'll either have amnesia or turn a blind eye to the fact that premiums truly were skyrocketing before the Affordable Care Act. The average family premium increased an astonishing 131 percent between 1999 and 2009. That's more than three times worker wages, four times general inflation, and considerably faster than overall medical inflation. I ask Congress not to buy into the insurance industry's PR campaign the vast majority of young adults will benefit from the law. Many, for the first time, will be able to get decent, affordable coverage that will enable them to stay healthy without fear of financial ruin. Mr. Chairman and members of this committee, many of your constituents have been counting, have been counting the days until January 1, 2024.
2014, when insurance companies will no longer be able to deny them coverage or charge them far more than their family budgets can handle. Please do not dash their hopes. If you change the Affordable Care Act to enable insurance companies to meet profit goals, and that's what's really going on here, uh, helping them to meet profit goals, then the results will be tragic, and many of your constituents will continue to be at risk of dying prematurely, like Leslie Elder. Thank you.